The next speaker coming up is going to be uh, Jeff Jung. He's the Vice President of Marketing for Brain Sentinel, and uh, he's going to talk to you about the Seizure Link product that they make. Please welcome Jeff. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Tom mentioned, my name is Jeff. I'm with Brain Sentinel. We are a startup based in San Antonio, Texas. Um, I've been with them for about five years, and it was my introduction to epilepsy when I joined Brain Sentinel. And at the time, I didn't think that I knew anybody uh, with epilepsy. And as soon as I joined the company and I started talking about what we were doing, I all of a sudden realized um, that I knew a lot of people because people started coming up to me, uh, close friends, close family, uh, and they started to tell me their story. And I realized that there was this whole side of them that I never knew before. And for whatever reason, either they didn't feel like talking about it or didn't feel like uh, sharing that part of me. But when they heard about what we were doing, um, that was sort of like a, a, a door that opened. And um, I realized that, that in my life, I knew a lot of people who were affected by, by epilepsy much more than, than I did before. Um, so we are a uh, company that was founded out of a need. Uh, our co-founder, um, our founder had a daughter whose son had uh, nocturnal events and she didn't know what they were. It took a long time to get a diagnosis. Uh, in the meantime, it was affecting their quality of life. Um, uh, as, as we often hear at these types of shows, uh, they were co-sleeping with their son because they were afraid to uh, they're afraid of what might happen at night. Uh, even during the day, it affected the, you know, the independence of the child as well as the mom. And so we uh, were given this charge to go and try and find uh, a, a technology, a device that could help with these uh, situations with these parents who were, who were facing this uh, challenge. And also, um, uh, so when we started, we started looking at the muscle signal. So a lot of uh, devices and alerting systems are out there. They focus on the shaking and on the, and on the motion. And uh, what we did is we focused on the muscle signal, uh, uh, surface electromyography, and specifically uh, through, the, through the biceps to find a way to help uh, identify if there was an event that was happening at night. Uh, and, and that led over time to the launch of a direct-to-consumer product uh, called the Seizure Link System, which, I'm, which I'll talk about. So how does it work? I see a few familiar faces of folks who have already stopped by our booth uh, today. Um, but the Seizure Link system is a device you wear it on your biceps. It's non-invasive. It's lightweight. It's one ounce. And you just put it right here on top of the biceps. And what it's looking for is a sustained tonic muscle contraction. So rather than the shaking, it's as the, as the muscles start to clench. That's um, what it's looking for. And if that's sustained or prolonged for nine seconds or longer, that's when the alert goes out uh, to the caregiver's uh, cell phones. Um, and there's, there's an app that works on both Android and, and uh, Apple. Uh, there's also uh, an option, there's a button on here. So if somebody is having an aura, they can just hit that button and it will automatically trigger the alarm and alert to get help uh, uh, to their side. And so we, we're going to, we have a video that I want to show you. So we'll see how this works. As important as it yeah. is to get a good night's sleep, it's often difficult for those who experience you sustained tonic muscle contractions and their loved ones to hear what they may miss while they sleep. But how is he here? Dr. Jung has developed a new standard in full seizure alerting. It's the fastest most accurate consumer alerting system. Seizure Link's algorithm works with a signal on a biceps muscle that recognizes sustained tonic muscle contractions. With Seizure Link, muscle, not motion, is the new standard in alerting systems. Have better peace of mind with a remarkably high 94% accuracy rate for sustained tonic muscle contractions and an incredibly low pulse alarm rate.
learn you can't predict when an event will strike, you can live confidently with the power of seizure thinking. I'm sorry about the volume being a little bit soft, so I hope you're able to hear uh, parts of that. Get back over. Great. So here is a uh, view of the app of what the caregiver sees. So the wearer has a phone uh, and an app, uh, and the caregiver has one as well. Uh, some of the key features is uh, it's all in one, uh, whether you're Android or Apple. Um, the hero's link status uh, is right there on the caregiver screen, so where they have those green checks. So if either David or Teresa were not connected or not linked to their seizure link device, then it would uh, show, it would be a red bar and there would be an X there so you know that they're not monitoring. Um, the hero can add up to 10 caregivers uh, and the caregiver can add up to four heroes. So in this case, in this example, this caregiver has, has two folks that they're, um, that they're connected to. Uh, there's an event log that happens in the seizure diary, so when, when the alarm goes off, either with the push button or automatically, sorry, uh, there's a seizure diary that event gets logged, and then after the event, you can add more information or you can go back and, and edit it. Uh, and then you can also use it to add in events that are not um, um, alerted for by the, by the device. Uh, you can then generate a printable PDF that you can then share uh, of the activity. And, um, and in our service, um, uh, there's no additional charge for learning service. It's, it's part of the uh, subscription for, for the um, electrode patches. Uh, there's also the location of the wearer's phone that's shared in the event screen. So uh, it will approximate where the phone is uh, and give you that uh, address. And so we have had uh, uh, the seizure link system out uh, for a few months and on some of our uh, testing with real patients, with real people with epilepsy and their caregivers. And so we have Crystal up top, um, and she's a 30-year-old. Uh, she has been living with epilepsy since 13, went through uh, 12 years, she said, of, of misdiagnosis. Um, but now she's, over time, she's gotten her seizures under better control, but she likes to have it for uh, just sort of the backup, just in case. Uh, there's Chris, who's a father. Um, he's had to train his five-year-old uh, son what to do if daddy has, um, has a seizure. And so they've been able to integrate it into their life as, as part of what happens. Um, and then there's Sarah, uh, who uses it. She's actually had, she reports to us that she had the case where she's actually woken up in an ambulance or at the hospital and nobody in her, in her life uh, knew where she was or even to be looking for her. Um, and the hospital wasn't really sure who she was, so it took a while to sort of reconnect. So in, in this case, if something like that were to happen, then uh, one of her loved ones would be, would be alerted to the event. Um, so using uh, Tom's and Danny Did's uh, um, buying guide, your criteria, you know, just in terms of looking for uh, if seizure link, uh, and the seizure link system is right for you, uh, you know, determine what your, your best uh, needs are. We always encourage, you know, speak to your physician. Uh, uh, does something like this that's muscle-based, would that be uh, effective for you or not? Uh, determine your goals, so, you know, if better notifications, the tracking and documenting is something that you need, this is, this is a system that can help you. Uh, you know, getting better uh, in terms of comfort, so again, this fits on with a hydrogel, uh, so it's made to be uh, very easy to take on and take off. Uh, you can use these patches for uh, multiple or for or double or dual placements. So you can take it off. There's a, a special backing that you can put it back on while you're not wearing it and then put it back on. Um, and then uh, usability in terms of range of use and the accessories. Um, you know, we, we, we worked really hard uh, to make sure that not only is the device working, but that you know if there's a problem that you need to fix with a, with a loose electrode or if somebody's walked out, walked away from their phone and they're no longer being monitored. So the caregivers are up to date on the monitoring status. Um, so please come by our booth. We're uh, up at the front, 108, 109. Follow us on Facebook. Uh, but if you come by the booth, we can uh, do a demo for you and, and show, you, uh, show you how it works. So thank you for your time.
So we'll have a, just a time for a few questions. We've got one in the front. I was going to ask uh, EEG, uh, what's the longest period of time you can do uh, like an at-home EEG? It, it's really up to this uh, physician that's ordering the test, frankly. But uh, they, we have clients who go many, many days. And they can go a very long time. Usually that will, if you go beyond 72 hours, really it's recommended the subject be re reapply, check the electrodes, uh, and um, change batteries, things of that nature. But we've seen studies go 14 days or longer, um, but usually with some attention during that time period. We do 72 hours in our facility, and then we reset the electrodes. Yeah. You can say if you the electrodes on the head for about seven days without taking them off and reapplying them. We do 14 days in patients without having them. Any other questions for any of the panelists? Go ahead. So the hectometers on DNS, um, does it, um, is what would a model of that one be called? So that's called Centiva. Centiva, and um, does it also have a name in it as well? It's got the name. So we like to say magnet queen. Some people say magnet king, but I say magnet. So the magnet always wins. So if you're not sure if the auto stim, we call it auto stim, that automatic sensing device. If you're not sure if the auto stim turned on, if you swipe the magnet, it still turns on. Okay. And if auto stim had turned on, it stops auto stim and the magnet still fires. So until we get the settings right and we're sure auto stim is picking up your seizures, we still tell the families to swipe the magnet just to be sure. And then once we get the settings perfect and we have ways in clinic, we can test the device to make sure that the computer timestamps the auto stims and it timestamps the magnet swipes. So when you come back to clinic, we can check and see if auto stim caught your seizure, and then we can tell you it's catching your seizures, you don't need to keep swiping the magnet. Um, but you can still, magnet always wins. It's in charge. It's a pretty cool device. I think. How long did the batteries last? So four to six years, depending on the settings. So actually, it's, it's kind of interesting. So we always think we want something to have the longest battery life until something new, better comes out. So the last one that came out that had an auto stim feature, they said four to six years, but now this one comes out and the Centiva has this day-night programming, which is totally cool. So I can do all these really fancy things with day-night programming, and the last one didn't have that, and now I'm wishing those batteries would die. So, I, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh, they made that one six years ago, they made it the last six years, and now I want the new one, and I can't put it in, so then I have to be like creative and tell the insurance company the battery's dying, because I <laughs> Maybe I can get it. So, but it's really interesting that we've done some data looking at our patients with what we call traditional. I call I don't know what people in the world call it. I call it traditional VNS, kind of the old VNS without the auto stim feature. And patients who transition from old VNS to new VNS, that traditional VNS seizure reduction is about 62 to 65 percent. Just everybody lumps together. I can tell you which seizure types respond better or worse, but if you lump them all together, about 62 to 65 percent. With the new VNS, that's up to 75%. And there was just a study published in, out of England that confirmed that, and our data at CHLA is showing that as well. And we've put in a, a lot of the Centiva. So um, so the new device seems to work even better than the than the old one did. So something about that auto stim, whether it's catching seizures faster and that's overall improving seizure reduction, that they may be catching seizures so fast that the patients don't know they're having it. Because you probably know this from EEG, sometimes you'll see the heart rate go up before there's even a clinical seizure. So it may be catching the seizure before the patient even knows that they have a seizure. So in essence, they, their seizure counts go down because they don't even know they have that seizure because it's often before they have any clinical signs, which is really interesting. And does it, um, oh, uh, I read that some, sometimes it can also help with like, anxiety and- it, it can, good question. So I didn't get that because I didn't want to go over the time because you know we're on a, we have a limit here. Um, so it, it's used for depression in adults. So there's actually been formal studies that it got an FDA approval for depression. So it definitely treats depression in adults. We see these what we call positive side effects, which was a slide I had up when I was talking about the real side effects. My bad. So it makes, we see patients tend to be more alert. In kids, we see the more, they do better in school, they have better learning skills. In adults, they tend to have improved memory and improved cognition. And then almost everybody has a faster recovery procedure. So patients tend to recover more quickly. If patients had slept for three to four hours, they tend to only need 20 to 30 minutes. So when you look at the whole day, if patients were down for two days after a seizure, and it wasn't bad enough that you had a seizure, then you lost two days recovering from the seizure. So one seizure takes out three days, which, you know, totally takes. 
So if you can recover in 20 minutes instead of two days, that's you no know, kind of a little bit. So we see that improved post cycle time in, in almost everybody. And those improvements come before the seizure control. So it's not just we made your seizures better and took you off meds that you're brighter and more alert and do better at school and your job and everything. It's actually something different than BNS is doing, which we don't completely understand exactly what it does. We had another question here. Yeah. So I, I've been doing sports for a long time, but I just love moving because I love losing. So yeah. can I still move in any physical with the Yeah, things? we don't restrict with that physical activity. I mean, I don't think anybody with a brain should play football. That's just my own personal opinion. Yeah. But we don't <laughs> restrict sports with being us. Not even getting to play hockey with being us. But it, it won't rip out. No, no it, no, it doesn't rip out. It's sewn in. It's completely inside. Yeah, they, they put those wire around and they tether it in place and it's sewn into place. It doesn't, it doesn't move. It doesn't come out. I feel like the rest of them. No. It shouldn't be a problem. I mean, it turns, I mean, every surgeon's different. In my institution, we don't restrict sports with it. In. Yeah, I mean, I can't speak for every surgeon. <laughs> Any other questions before we wrap up? They sew it in there pretty good. It's inside. So we use a neurosurgeon, um, but it can be anybody who knows head and neck anatomy. So some surgeons use ENT, some use head and neck surgeons. So it's the vagus nerve is pretty easy to find. It's in the carotid sheath with the carotid vessels. You just open the vessels and the nerve is pretty easy to identify if you're familiar with that area. It's a pretty short surgery. It takes about 20 minutes to put it in. And then how do you change the vessels? So, the, so once the wires are in, they never come out. So the wires are good forever. The wires are actually pretty well made. And we've not had a broken wire gush, knock on wood. I think my last broken wire was 2005. So it's been a really long time. So the wires are really well made and don't need to come out again. When the generator dies, they take the whole one out and get brand new. So yeah, you're good. And they just unplug the wires, take the generator out, put it back in. So a small incision, that's like 10 minutes to replace the generator. Ma'am, go ahead. Question in the front. Yeah. <coughs> if your Unipod, now there's metal detectors everywhere. So that would be something that you- Doesn't go off. Yeah, titanium. It doesn't set off a metal detector. So it doesn't set off? No. Nope. You can literally go, go walk right through. Yeah, we give you a little card when you get it that says you have an implantable device like any company would. And we just usually tell people to describe it like a pacemaker for epilepsy because most people have an idea what a pacemaker is. But it doesn't set off the metal detectors of the airport. And they're completely safe to use. Yep, you can just go live your life and not worry about it. <laughs> okay, one last question here. Does it um, affect if you're going to have a test like an MRI? It does, so good question. So because it's, it's operated by a magnet that was very good that you thought of that. So it can be, it has to be turned off before you get an MRI. There are some MRIs, MRIs that you can't do. Um, MRI of a certain area of the cervical spine is you can't do with it in because the wires can heat up. But MRIs of the brain can be done and MRIs of the joints can be done. So CT scans and other scans are okay. Um, so it's something that you want to talk with your doctor about. We feel like we need to stop seizures. And if some point down the future a patient needs an MRI of that area, I'd rather take it on at that point because I can admit the body in other ways. But you can get an MRI of the brain, which is most important to us as neurologists. So I uh, just remind you that everybody here on the panel has a table, so feel free to go visit with them. Um, there are other uh, device manufacturers here as well. Empatica has a table, Smart Monitor has a table, and there may be more. So um, please ask questions at the tables. Thank you for being here, um, and let us know if we can be helpful or put you in touch with the people you want to talk to. Thanks.